So now we'll move on to railways and railway material that we have uh, can be divided into two parts or maybe three parts. Uh, uh, the track has to be kept in good order, the railway track, and then we have to deal with the uh, uh, making vehicles on, for the track and uh, uh, keeping them in good order. So, um, in order to railway track is laid on wooden uh, uh, balks of timber known as sleepers, which are laid horizontally on the ground, and the railways and the rails run across them. In order to attach the rail uh, to the sleeper, uh, spikes or bolts uh, were uh, used to do that. But in order for that to go through the wood, you have to bore a hole in it. And these are known as Scotch nose uh, augers, barrel eyed augers. This is the barrel eye through which a handle goes, so you're able to turn this twisty. And these were used to actually bore millions and millions of holes in railway sleepers right across continents. And each one had to have these, otherwise, they would uh, uh, tend to split the. Uh, the timbers, or the spike wouldn't even go in the timber in the first place. Having got the uh, track in place uh, in certain types of railways, uh, the rail sits in what's known as a chair, uh, which is a cast iron, which is a metal shoe for the rail to sit in, and it's tightened in place by a wooden wedge. Now the wedges have to be tightened in position, and this is the hammer that does it. It's known as a railway key hammer. And so this fits on the end of a very long shaft, uh, about three foot long, and it is swung uh, by the plate there, and it it's, it's tightening the keys up, holding the rail in place on the, on the metal chair. So that's another very important, in the maintenance of the track, uh, that's absolutely of paramount importance. So that moves those two. We're now on the railway uh, wagon and carriage building side of railways in which uh, in the 19th century and right up to the 1950s in England, but of course we're talking export, uh, most vi railway vehicles, wagons, railway carriages were made of wood and in order to fasten the various components together as well as normal joints uh, metal plates had to be attached and these were done by bolts which have to have holes to allow uh, the fastenings to go through them so here are the uh, bits that did that job this is a wagon builders centre bit uh, which was used for boring the sides of railway wagons which would be no more than say three inches thick so you need quite a, a relatively short bit but for deeper holes you want a, uh, a sheeting bit uh, which is for, for, for the uh, deeper holes in wagons to turn those bits because they were dealing largely in hardwoods in many cases you had to have a brace called a wagon builders brace which gave you an enormous amount of power in order to uh, make it relatively easy to turn this bit by hand through these hard timbers hundreds and hundreds if thousands and thousands of holes so it's a very arduous business very hard work but all railways have to have wagons that's the business in carrying goods and, and passengers and these were the bits that were used in railway carriage workshops in order to uh, produce them um, Part of the uh, of railway wagons, of course, and locomotives are the wheels which travel on the track. And uh, this is a wheel tapper's hammer. Uh, this particular one is, as, as far as I know, uh, probably made uh, for English railways. Uh, not unlike the ones used for foreign railways, of which this is one. Forget the handle. But this has on it here FCCA marked on the head, like that. This is a railway in the Argentine. Uh, this was research uh, has told me that that's what it is. And because this is the hammer head of its weight, 
uh, probably weighing a pound and a half, pound and a quarter, pound and a half in weight. It has two faces identical. Essentially, it's the same hammer size and section as that one. And th so what we've got here is a hammer uh, that, that would have gone out to the um, Argentinian railways for uh, testing wheels. Uh, they had a, a man going round uh, railway stations when the train had pulled in and he would tap the wheels along the length of the train and what that did was to make a ringing sound. If it wasn't a ringing sound, it indicated to the man that one of the wheels was cracked and therefore dangerous, so they would take that vehicle out of service. But it was something that was regularly done all over the world until ultrasonic testing came in, in the late 20th century. And finally, we've got to the locomotive, which pulls the coaches on the track and wagons on the track. And to that end, we have here an adjustable spanner, which was carried on the locomotive to tighten or slacken any nuts as needed. And this, again, is uh, anything from 1850 up to, say, 1900 for the uh, last half of the 19th century. Spanners of this sort were used for that purpose.